So if you're converting from polar to, and they say Cartesian in our book, but that is the same thing as saying rectangular. I'm just going to make that note here. So if we want to go to rectangular, meaning that we want to have an x and a y, then we can use these formulas. x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. If we have rectangular, which again they're calling Cartesian, and we want to go to polar, then we can use these formulas. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And tangent theta is equal to y over x. All right, so let's look at a couple of quick examples. We want to convert the following points from polar to Cartesian coordinates, to rectangular. So we're going to use as our formulas, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. We have our r value, which is 2, and we have our angle, which is the theta. And so all we really have to do is plug into these formulas. So for our x, we're going to say x is equal to r, so for us 2 cosine theta. And so we're going to plug in our values. Okay, so remembering, now we're going to solve this. So remembering that cosine is an even function, and remember that on an even function, if you have a negative on your angle, that it can be dropped. You can ignore that because it would be the same thing as the positive. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, this is the same thing as 2 cosine pi over 3. We know that cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, and we either know that from our memory or from checking on with our chart. And 2 times 1 half is going to equal 1. And so that will be our x value for part a. And then we're going to do the similar thing for our y value. We'll use our y formula. So we're going to say y is equal to 2. And this time sine theta. So sine of theta. So sine of negative pi over 3. Now sine is an odd function which remember means that that negative can be brought to the front. So I'm going to bring it all the way to the front, and then we'll evaluate sine of pi over 3. So we know that sine at pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And we'll multiply. When we multiply, the 2's are going to cancel out, leaving me negative square root of 3. Now, you do want to put this together as a coordinate. So the rectangular coordinate is going to be 1 and negative square root of 3. Now, it's worth noting that you really should plot your points to make sure that your points appear to be in the same location. If they're not, then you've made a mistake somewhere. So if I were to plot the point 2 and negative pi over 3, all right, so I'm just going to real quick plot this point. I would need to draw an angle that has a negative pi over 3 measurement, which would be maybe right about here. Then I know that my r value is going to tick off two places down the terminal side. So our point is going to lie somewhere here, specifically in the fourth quadrant. Now consider your rectangular system where you're plotting over 1 and down square root of 3. Now square root of 3 is like 1.7 in your calculator, so it's going to be like maybe right about here. And so you want to be sure that it's at least reasonable to assume that your points are falling in the same position, okay? And depending on how neat you are, they may not look like they're in exactly the same place, but it should be close. If it's not close, then you probably have made a mistake somewhere. So that's a quick check to be sure that you're on the right track. All right, so let's go ahead and look at part B. 
So for part B, we have as our R value, negative three. And our angle is pi over four. And so I'm going to start with my x formula. x is equal to r cosine theta, so we're going to have negative 3 cosine pi over 4. We know that cosine pi over 4, either from memory or from checking our table of exact values, is square root of 2 over 2. And so our x value is going to be, there's not a lot we can do to simplify, so negative 3 on the square root of 2 over 2. All right, we're going to do the same thing using our y formula. So we'll say y is equal to our r value times sine of pi over 4. And again, sine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And when we multiply, we're going to have negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. And again, we want to put these together as a point. And so our answer will look like negative 3 on the square root of 2 over 2 for our x and the same value for our y. And again, I'm not going to right now in the interest of time, but again, the easiest way to check is to plot the original point in a polar system, plot your point that you came up with in the rectangular system, and make sure that the points appear to be in the same location. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to look at right now is converting from Cartesian, so from rectangular, so from an X and a Y, to polar. So remember that your formulas for doing this, we have a formula for r, which is going to be r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And we have a formula for the angle, which is tangent theta is equal to y over x. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with part a. For part a, we have an x value of negative 3, and we have a y value of 2. And so we're going to plug in. The R calculation is typically is fairly easy, so we're going to say R squared is equal to the X squared, so that will be negative 3 squared, plus the Y value squared, so that's going to be 2 squared. So R squared is equal to 9 plus 4, so R squared is equal to 13, and taking the square root of both sides, R is equal to the square root of 13. All right, for our angle, we're going to set up our tangent equation. So we're going to say tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Now, I need to find the angle, and this is not a value that I know or something that is one of my exact values off of my unit circle. So I'm going to need to use my calculator to find it. So I'm going to enter it in as inverse tangent. of 2 divided by negative 3. All right, and we want our calculator to be in radians. Typically when we are talking about polar coordinates, we are looking at radian measurements. So make sure your calculator is in radians, and then we're going to do inverse tangent of 2 divided by negative 3. And so that is going to give me negative 0.59 for my angle. All right, so now we still want to check. We want to make sure that the coordinate that we're coming up with, right, which has an R value of the square root of 13, and a theta value of 0.5, negative 0.59, that that makes sense in terms of where the point is located, that it matches up with the rectangular coordinate that we started with. 
So we need to plot these, and this is especially important here, where we're using an inverse tangent, we need to be sure that we're in the right quadrant. So if I plot negative 3, 2, like in an algebra class, I'm going to go over negative 3, and I'm going to go up 2. And so my point is going to lie about there in the second quadrant. If I plot what I came up with as a polar coordinate, now, I don't know exactly where negative 0.59 is, but I know that it's not far, and it does move down in a negative direction. So I'm going to estimate maybe right about here for negative 0.59. Okay, I know that this is pi over 2, so this would be negative 1.57, so I'm not anywhere close to that. So I've got a pretty good estimate there. And my R value that I came up with is a square root of 13. So square root of 13 is 3.6. And so I'm going to come down on this terminal side somewhere between 3 and 4 and place a point. Now, the problem is very easily at this point I can see that I am not in the right quadrant. I'm supposed to be in quadrant 2 for my point, and my point is landing in quadrant 4. So I know that I do not have the right answer in, at this time. So what I need to do is I need to take my angle and I need to move it into quadrant 2. So I, in other words, need to flip it completely around so it's on this opposite side and then it will be in the correct quadrant. Now the easiest way to do that is to take the value that you came up with, that negative 0.59, and add pi to it. And so if you do that, then your angle becomes 2.55. Okay, so I am going to, again, take negative 0.59 and add pi. By adding pi, I'm adding 180. It flips it back into the second quadrant, and my new angle becomes 2.55. All right, and so I'm going to come back down here to my answer, and I'm going to change out that angle so that I have the correct value. Okay, and you could replot to be sure, but what it essentially does, again, is it moves it back this way, and then you're going to come. So my angle now becomes this direction instead, because it's going to be a positive 2.55. And the square root of 13, we said, was between 3 and 4. And so your point's going to lie right here, which is basically the same place as what we had on the rectangular. Okay, all right, one other example that we're going to do, let's look at part B real quick. We have square root of 3 and negative 1, and so that is going to be, the square root of 3 is going to be my x, and the negative 1 is going to be my y, and we are going to come in and convert these. All right, so let's do the r first. So for the r, we're going to say r squared is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus the y value squared. So the square root of 3 squared is just going to be 3. Negative 1 squared will be 1. So we have r squared is equal to 4. We take the square root of both sides. r is equal to 2. When we do our angle, we say tangent theta is equal to y over x. Now I'm going to go ahead and rationalize that so that it looks like a value that I'm used to seeing. So we're really looking for an angle where the tangent is equal to negative square root of 3 over 3. Now this one is a value that is actually something that I know from my unit circle, and so I should use that exact value as opposed to using my calculator. So let's go ahead and plot my original point so that I know which quadrant I need to be working in. So for my original point, square root of 3 is like 1.7, and we're going to drop down 1. So my original point is in quadrant 4. We need to be sure that we select an angle in quadrant 4 as well. So remember that tangent at pi over 6 has a value of square root of 3 over 3. Now that's the wrong quadrant, but I'm going to keep that in mind that that's sort of my base angle. Now I need that angle in the fourth quadrant, 
So one option that I have is to take that pi over 6 and just make it negative, which will move it down into the fourth quadrant. I also could call that angle 11 pi over 6. That would be another option. All right, so let's check and make sure that what we have makes sense. So here is my solution. If I'm going to plot that, I'm going to draw a negative pi over 6 angle, which is going to sit right about here. I'm going to go two units out on that which is going to be right about there. And so again, it does appear now that the points are pretty much in the same location. Again, the more neater I am with my drawing, the closer I get that approximation to be.